Let's talk about sample history, our history, medical history gathering piece of our patient assessment system. Sample history occurs sometime after our scene size up and our primary survey of life threats. Sample history may not come next in line. Maybe we're taking vital signs or doing a detailed physical exam first, but it happens somewhere as our information gathering session. Sample is an acronym that helps us remember questions to ask our patient. It could be a simple six questions or it could lead to 600 questions, depending on our patient's history. The S of sample stands for signs and symptoms. The A stands for allergies, M, medications. P is past pertinent history. L stands for last oral intake and output. And E are events leading up to the illness or injury. Let's start with signs and symptoms. Signs generally we get from our detailed physical exam. There are things that we can see on the patient. So it's those bruises, those cuts, the swelling, the abrasions, the deformities. Symptoms, on the other hand, are things that we can't see that our patient will tell us about. So things they can feel, maybe things that they have experienced prior to our arrival. There's another acronym that helps us remember things to ask about symptoms, and it's our OPQRST. So symptoms could be things like vomiting, headache, stomach pain, dizziness, vision changes, things that we can't experience that they're gonna describe to us. When they tell us about these symptoms, we can ask about onset. Did these symptoms come on fast or slow? If our patient says, I felt fine this morning and then about 45 minutes ago, I just suddenly got really sick to my stomach. That would be a fast onset. Versus the patient who tells us, uh, three or four days ago, I just started feeling off. And over the last three days, it's just gotten worse and worse until today I called you because the pain was unbearable. That would be a gradual onset of symptoms. P of our OPQRST is provokes and pelades. Basically, what makes it feel worse? What makes it feel better? And we can ask our patient, does anything make it feel worse? Does anything make those symptoms worse? Yeah, when I stand up, my vision almost becomes tunnel vision I can barely see. That would be a provoke. Versus a paleates, if I lay on my side with my knees at my chest, my stomach feels better. That's a paleate. Quality, ask your patient to describe those symptoms to you. You may hear things like sharp or dull, achy, crampy, it's stabbing, it sort of pulsates, are all different ways your patient may describe the quality of their pain. You can ask your patient, does the pain go anywhere? Does it radiate? Your patient may describe an abdominal pain, oh, my stomach really hurts and it feels like it goes straight through to my back. That would be pain that radiates. Refers can be another R word in our OPQRST of describing symptoms. And referred pain is generally not something the patient describes specifically. But for example, a pain with a heart attack could be jaw pain or left shoulder pain, where their chest may not hurt as much, but they've got these odd pains in other places. People who are having gallbladder issues often have pain in their right shoulder, and that's a referred pain. Severity, we often ask our patients to, disc to put a number to their pain. A common question is, on a scale of zero to 10, zero being no pain at all, and 10 being the worst possible pain you could imagine, what number would you give your pain today? The number that they give me is not so important as how it changes over time and with the treatments that I provide. So one person's seven is another person's three, and I'm not as concerned with the number they give because it's very subjective, but I am concerned with how it changes over time. OPQRST time 
is how long this pain is occurring. So folks often get onset and time confused. If a patient tells me, yeah, about three days ago, I just started feeling bad and it just got worse and worse and worse until today the pain was unbearable. Their onset is gradual and it's three days describes their time frame. Versus that patient who says, you know, about 45 minutes ago, I just all of a sudden started hurting. That's a fast onset for 45 minutes. We'd like to know about some interventions as well. What has the patient done to help their symptoms? Have they taken anti-nausea meds if they're feeling nauseous? Have they uh, taken any over-the-counter or prescription painkillers if they're having a lot of pain or maybe a headache? What have they done to try and improve their symptoms? The next piece of our sample history is allergies. As most of us know, people can be allergic to a variety of things. They can be allergic to medications, foods, environment, pets, pollens. What we wanna know with their allergies is have you come in contact with that? Have you been exposed to that allergy? Could that be the problem that's happening today? Another reason to collect information on allergies, especially with medications, is that it may determine their course of treatment as they move forward. If they're allergic to certain medications, then other medications will have to be prescribed in order to manage their condition. So speaking of medications, what medications are, is your patient taking or maybe should be taking and they're not? So we'd like to know about current medications and are they on a schedule? Sometimes we are dispatched to a home in the morning and the patient hasn't had their morning medications yet. That could be important information for the hospital. They may need to assist with those medications depending on the patient's issue. Also, are they prescribed medications that maybe they haven't taken? So things that didn't make them feel good or they can't afford. For some reason, the prescription that they've been told to take they haven't been taking. We'd also like to know about things that they're taking that maybe they shouldn't be or that could potentially interact with their prescription medications. Many folks are on herbal supplements and that's not always information that their pharmacist or doctor is aware of. And there can be some fairly negative interactions between prescription medications and herbal supplements that could be the root of why we were called to their house that day. And then we'd like to know anything else that chemically alters your body. So asking about recreational drugs can be a good question to throw in here if it seems appropriate. Our patient's past pertinent history and their past pertinent medical history can give us an idea as to what's going on today that maybe they didn't consider as well. In terms of our trauma patients, we can ask, have you ever injured this site before? And did it feel like this the last time? Especially for folks who maybe have a recurring dislocation. So they dislocate their shoulder three or four times and we're called there for a dislocated shoulder. Does this feel like the other times they've dislocated or does it feel worse? It may indicate that they have a greater injury potentially. Asking if they're under the care of a doctor can trigger their memory to recall that yeah, I see an endocrinologist every year. Oh, what do you see an endocrinologist for? Oh, it's to manage my diabetes. It seems like something fairly obvious, but when people are experiencing an emergency, especially a traumatic emergency, it's not always the first thing that comes to mind. So we may need to be a little bit more specific with our questions. We can also ask about specific history of different organ systems. We can ask about problems with their heart, neurologic problems like seizures or history of stroke, respiratory disorders, diabetes, gastrointestinal problems, things like that. The L of our sample history pertains to last oral intake. We're asking about things that they've put in their body. Uh, we've already asked about medications, so here we can ask about liquids and food that they've had? Are they eating and drinking normally for them? Maybe they haven't had much to drink in the last week. It could lead to concerns about dehydration. 
or they haven't had much of an appetite. If they have appendicitis, folks don't tend to have much of an appetite leading up to the emergency that an appendicitis can be. With last oral intake, we also like to think about outputs, especially if somebody's experiencing abdominal pain, a good question to ask could be, when was your last bowel movement? They may be constipated or they may be having gastrointestinal illness that's leading to severe diarrhea. So asking about that last output, how often have you been urinating? Has it seemed strange to you? If they have a lot of odor or dark fluid when they're urinating, it may lead us to think about things like dehydration as well. The last part of our sample history, we're gonna ask about events leading up to their illness or injury or why we're at their house today. It gives the opportunity to find out some additional information. We could also ask, is there anything else that you think that I should know about things leading up to this event today? And it gives our patient the opportunity to give us more details and maybe filling in blanks of questions that we haven't asked yet. And that is the meat of our sample history. Our, our history taking time that can ask some very specific questions that can give us a rounded patient picture. Hello EMTs, today we're gonna to go over a sample history demo. Hi sir, my name's Mark, what's your name? Nathan. Nathan, I'm noticing you don't look too good. It looks like you're a little pale, sweaty, and I notice you're clutching your chest. What's going on today? Uh, I'm having really bad chest pain. Really bad chest pain? All right. When did this start? Uh, just a little while before I called you guys. Did it come on all of a sudden or did it gradually get worse? Oh, it was all of a sudden. It was all of a sudden. And is anything you're doing making that better or worse? No. No? Uh, when, did it, when did it happen? What were you doing? Uh, I was gardening. You were gardening? And it all of a sudden came on? Yeah. All right. Uh, can you tell me, describe that pain? Uh, yeah, it's like an elephant is sitting on my chest. All right, and is it right in your chest or does it move anywhere? Uh, it's in the middle of my chest, but it also radiates up into my jaw and into my back. And into your back? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> and on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being no pain and 10 being the worst pain ever, how bad does it hurt? A 10. A 10? And when it started, did it start as a 10? Yeah. Yeah? <clears throat> okay, and how long ago did this happen? Uh, about... 15 minutes ago. About 15 minutes ago? And when did you call us? Uh, about 10 minutes ago. About 10 minutes ago? All right. And have you taken anything to try and help that pain? No. No? No medications or anything? No. All right. Do you have any allergies? I'm allergic to penicillin. Penicillin? Yeah. Uh, have you been exposed to penicillin today? No. No. All right. Do you take any medications? Uh, yeah, my doctor prescribed me um, nitroglycerin and I take an aspirin every day. Okay, and have you taken either of those today? No. No, no nitro or no aspirin? No. All right. And what, what did your doctor prescribe those medications for? I, I have angina. You have angina? Okay. Uh, do you have any other medical conditions? No. No? Has this ever happened before? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Uh, was it this bad? Uh, yeah, I, I had a heart attack. You had a heart attack before. Okay. And when was the last time you ate today? I had a hamburger about 30 minutes ago. About 30 minutes ago? Okay. And any difference in your bowel movements or urine output? Any blood in your stool? Any dark tarry stools? No. No? Okay. And can you tell me again just what you were doing before this happened? Uh, well, I had a lot to get done in the garden, so I went out into the garden. I was working really hard, and then suddenly it just... Bam was on me, and I, I came inside and then called 911. All right. 